So what is up guys, Nick here helping you to master your technology, Xiaomi Redmi Note 10 Pro. And a quick disclaimer, Xiaomi did send this phone out for review. However, I was not paid to write a script for this phone or to say any specific thing. I'm just telling you everything I know about it and every opinion you hear, everything in this video is all honest straight from me, myself. And I am going to say some bad things about this phone later in the video and as well as the things I personally found that were positive with this phone. So I just wanted to let you guys know that before we go forward. Oh, now last year I covered the Note 9 Pro and this is the one after that. This one just got launched today and man, is this going to be maybe the best mid-range value of the year. So inside the box, they do include a clear case. We'll try that on later. You can see there is a SIM card tool in the box as well. And here, this is why I gotta say, with the specifications, take a look. Now I've already opened this up, so we are gonna review the phone here. But you can see 108 megapixel quad camera with a telemacro lens, 120 hertz AMOLED dot display. That's a 6.67 inch, so we're pushing near that flagship size there with that 6.67. Now that's dual speakers as well. This also has a Qualcomm Snapdragon 732G, and most people really do like when they get the Qualcomm CPU in there because we know it's going to be good eight nanometer high performance processor and check this out a 33 watt fast charger in the box look at the size of this battery 5020 milliamps yeah you heard that right for a budget device like this it's going to be just a really good size so yeah we already opened this up so you can kind of see the onyx gray here and we will take a look closer at the device but man does it really look good for the price so don't judge my dog. <laughs> That's the wallpaper I decided to go with there. I haven't given him a name yet. But maybe you guys can give him a name down below. And you can see we do have ourselves the USB-C cable in the box of this phone. Pretty neat. And we do have ourselves a 33 watt charger right here. Now if you're in the US, you're gonna need an adapter for this one, but a fast charger included nonetheless. All right, guys, so let's take a look at the phone itself. This is the Onyx gray colorway. It does come in a few other colors as well. You can get in glacier blue and gradient bronze as well. So pretty nice here though. Now taking a look at the back, the star of the show here is at 108 megapixel quad camera system and they didn't print ultra premium. So you are getting a premium camera set up here. In addition to that 108 megapixel, you do have yourself an eight megapixel ultra wide, as well as a five megapixel telemacro camera and a two megapixel depth sensor. Taking a look at the back of the phone a little bit more, Redmi branding right there. You can see down here at the bottom, we do have a little bit of a dip here, a little bit of a curve, and it's kind of ergonomic here because on the edges, it just kind of slightly curves over. So if you take your hand to the back, it just kind of rests nicely in your hand. But this is a big phone. However, due to it being, you know, a plastic build here, you do have yourself a pretty nice lightweight. So this phone doesn't weigh too much at 193 grams. It is IP53 splash proof. So this is not waterproof, anything like that. But if you get a little bit of water on it, it should be okay. Now taking a look at the bottom of this phone, you can see we do have ourselves a USB-C. We do have ourselves speaker right here, a microphone hole. Over here on the right side, you will find yourself an, in, an embedded fingerprint sensor for this Xiaomi Redmi Note 10 Pro. So if I go ahead and hold down, you can just see how fast that thing just fires open into the phone. And then over here, you'll find yourself a volume rocker as well. The camera bump does stick out just a bit, but they did provide you a case for protection, so you're good there. And then you can see at the top some missing features from other phones that you might like about this one. We do have ourselves a headphone jack speaker as well as IR blaster for controlling your TV. Pretty cool stuff right there. And then on the left over here, we do have the SIM card tray. Now this has dual SIM slots as well as the ability to add an SD card for expanded memory. Although this one does come with 128 gigs on the phone by itself. And then we have another star of the show right here, the 6.7 or 6.67 inch dot AMOLED display. But this thing has one thing up its sleeve. Not only did Xiaomi bring the OLED displays to the entire Redmi Note 10 lineup, but they're bringing it with 120 hertz. So if we go over here to settings and we scroll down the display, you'll see that we do have the 120 hertz right here in the refresh rates. You can go ahead and put in 60 as well and take a look at the punch hole, a very small punch hole camera to give you mostly an all screen display. Now, if you look at the bottom, there is a slight chin, but it's pretty minor and you do have yourself 
a pretty flat display here. And you know, a lot of us do like a, some flat display. Further elaborating on that display, in the color schemes, just like some other phones you'll find from something like Samsung, for example, you have the ability to go ahead and put this thing into a saturated or a standard mode. So let's come out of here, out of this reading mode really quickly here. And let's take a look at these colors on the home screen. So very vibrant they do pop and they especially pop on some of these beautiful wallpapers that are included with this phone right here. If we go to settings and we go to display, again, you'll see in color schemes, standard mode. So if we hit st standard mode, look at how just standard it looks. So if you're not one who likes very vibrant colors, you'll be good with that one. So lots of tweakability as well on here and I can just leave it on auto for most of the time. And you also do have a dark mode. So really a nice improved contrast display over the Xiaomi Redmi Note 9 Pro. Although that one wasn't bad. This one is a marked improvement, a very good improvement here to the Note 10 Pro. And a couple other things about this display. It does have a sunlight mode and I use this today. It really just knocks that brightness way up if you are in the sunlight and it gets around 1200 nits of pre peak brightness. That's almost flagship grade brightness outside. So what a steal of a phone here when it comes to the display. Also, this can get 450 nits most of the time, and you can also get it up to around 700 nits as well, HBM. However, I gotta say the reading mode is also a neat touch. It kinda is like a blue light filter, but if you like to read on your phone and you wanna have it like just very easy to go ahead and be on your eyes at night, you could switch it to this paper mode, you could schedule it out. It's really up to you, but really comfortable on, and this is really one of the main upgrades over the Note 9 Pro, just really comfortable on your eyes. And also this has a sampling rate of 240 Hertz. So the touch sample, like the way you tap things, it should have a very smooth response time when you do tap applications along with a smooth scrolling time as well. And it's definitely showcasing that here, very smooth phone. And I gotta say, one thing I really do like about this is that it also comes with HDR10 certification. So you do have some really high-end features for not a high-end price here on the Note 10 Pro. All right, so let's quickly talk about the software and the features. So you do have the MyUI 12 on here, which is Xiaomi's, you know, their own skin over top of Android 11. So if we go over here to About Phone, you'll see the MyUI. This is the global version 12.01 stable on here. So no updates right now. So, but there's a lot of features in here. So you probably aren't gonna be thirsty for an update. You got, you got plenty of features going on. We do have ourselves Android 11 as well, which is definitely gonna make this phone an excellent op option as well in terms of bargain price point. Now, if we go down here and you see notifications and control center, you have a floating mode badges right there. If we go down here to wallpapers, they throw in a bunch of wallpapers for this phone. That's why I switched it up already in this video. So you're going to be nowhere near short of wallpaper. And there's so many wallpapers in here. You probably don't even need to download one of those wallpaper applications to get a beautiful wallpaper. If we go to themes here, they also have their own theme store here to use with this device as well. So if you want to get different icons, you want to change the overall look of it, you don't like the way it comes out of the box, plenty of customization here as well. Now you have passwords and security. You can do fingerprint unlock. You can do face unlock on this phone. Plenty of features there. If we go to battery and performance, you can also manage this. You can do an ultra battery saver mode and it says it can last 354 hours in that mode. So that's pretty cool. You have an app battery saver, which should shut down some of the applications to save you some battery in the background. You can even schedule this thing to turn it off and power it on. Now, if we go down to additional settings, you can see we do have our own gesture shortcuts as well. It does have a quick ball feature, which I have right here on the side where it can just kind of do little quick shortcuts. And also over here, a one-handed mode. It specifically works well in the button mode. So if you have the buttons on, not the gestures, it'll work really well there as well. And you have from Android 11, digital well-being, pretty neat. And if we go to special features, they got their own game turbo mode right here. So you can kind of go on your own faster gaming experience. So lots of stuff going on here, lots of little add-ons. And if we take a look at the notification tray up here in the software, lots of features up here as well. Most of those things we talked about are kind of up here and you can see pretty good brightness slider as, as well. It's a little bit lower so you can reach it. And then if you swipe out, it just kind of goes away. You swipe down, it'll bring that back up. Now taking a look at the icons, they might be for you, they might not be for you, the squared design, but if you go into settings here, you can go ahead and change the home screen layout to five by six. You can also go to settings and put it back to four by six 
or you can go ahead and lock that screen layout. In addition, on the home screen, if we go here, you can go ahead and go to the with app drawer section as well. So if you don't like this whole, you know, just home screen edition, you can have your app drawer here. And in the software here, they lay this out very smart. So you have communications, entertainment, photography, tools, news and reading, and you could edit out these sections and a uh, very nice, very easy to find your applications because they are categorized for you there. Now, Xiaomi, just like Samsung devices, throws on their own, you know, software over atop this. So there is quite a few Xiaomi apps in here. You can disable them. Some people root these devices. We'll see if some ROMs pop up for this phone. But for now, you're going to get that My UI 12. And I think overall, it's a pretty fun to use software. However, there are quite a few ads. So you might want to go ahead and disable them. Like when you when you first get this phone, when you download an application, it'll show you an ad. You can turn that off in the security settings but yeah go ahead there is a quite a few ads on this phone but they can be disabled in a lot of areas when it comes to the actual speed that 120 hertz is really making a difference here a big difference this phone feels like a flagship device in terms of just the overall smooth factor. However, there's an area where it still feels like a mid-ranger phone and that's a Snapdragon 732G. Sometimes applications, they don't open quite as fast as what you would find on the flagship Xiaomi phone, for example, but they're gonna get the job done and they're gonna get the job done at an upper mid-range level. So this feels closer to that of an upper mid-range, you know, phone in terms of the actual speed. But really, I'm very impressed with just how smooth the display is on this one and it's a big, big upgrade over last year's Note 9 Pro. Now this phone right here does have itself 128 gigabytes of storage and it's coupled with six gigs of RAM. So you are gonna get a pretty healthy amount of storage and you can expand it. So that's pretty nice as well. So I just wanna kind of mention that so you kind of know where we're at. Now, when it comes to the cameras of this phone, this is an area where you're really gonna like this one because I was testing it out and I'm pretty shocked by just the level of quality you're getting for this price point. Now, if we go ahead and hit photo, very nice there. We can punch in 2X, we can come out 0.6 for an ultra wide angle. And if we go over to more, check out this layout. We got portrait mode, we have short videos, the 108 megapixel camera mode, which is gonna give you more store, it's gonna take up more storage, but it's gonna give you a higher quality photo. You can also do some pro photography as well. You can edit out the EV, the exposure values, the lenses, you can change the ISOs, white balance, stuff like that. So quite a bit of pro stuff going on there. The night mode, now I just got done testing out that. I'll show you my samples in a minute. Panoramic, we have the vlogging section as well, where you can kind of do filmic kind of just shots here. So if you wanna have something look more like a movie when you're taking it, you can go ahead and tweak out the color or of, of the video. So very nice there as well. Now we do have slow motion, time-lapse, and dual video. This is super awesome right here. You can see the front camera and the rear camera. Not only that, you can go ahead and bring it down like that or bring it back up there. In addition to that, we can go ahead and move it around as well. So there's quite a bit you can do there. Pretty sweet that you can use both cameras at the same time. Now if we go down even further, you have a long exposure mode and you can also tweak this to look this way or you can see it in this big, easy to look this way. Now, if we go back over to video, and then the front facing camera is 16 megapixels. It's also pretty decent. It's got this more of this beautified look to it, but you can go ahead and take that off here in this section right here. But you know, really, it's a decent camera on the front. It doesn't match perfectly with the rear, so you're gonna have some inconsistency there, but these phones have really decent cameras overall for what you're paying for this phone and take a look at these settings they're all right here in the camera you can do a super macro mode you can do a movie frame so if you're trying to take you're trying to film a movie on your phone is that what you're trying to let's get out of super macro really quickly are you trying to film a movie on your phone because you can get the black bars right here in this phone itself so i feel like this can be a pretty solid creator's tool right here you can go to full screen vote mode as well. You can change the 16 by nine, four by three. You can change your timers. It's all here in the camera, but I'm just gonna shut up talking about it. Take a look at my samples and let me know if you think this is definitely a decent camera for the price point of this phone.
All right, guys, so let's talk about the audio. Technology. Xiaomi Redmi Note 9 Pro unboxing. Now, what inspired me to pick up the Redmi Note 9 Pro is simply that this phone is such a good price. So you'll notice at the bottom here, the speaker is far louder than the top one. For the, all the spec you are getting for this device. Now, this one's not widely known in the U.S. However, it is available on Amazon, which is why. Overall, though, I would say the stereo speakers will do the job. They don't sound quite as full, quite as rich as something like the more premier devices on the market, but they are just fine. I think they sound acceptable for what you're going to pay for this device right here. Okay, an impressive area of this phone has got to be the battery life. This phone can go two days pretty much easily if you don't overuse the device. I looked. I let this off the charger this morning at 100, 100% and this thing still has 71%. Do you see what time it is? It's 8.46 p.m. So that should tell you everything you need to know. So tomorrow I could wake up with like 60% and still make it the whole day. So, and then you have the battery saver mode on top of that. This thing's nuts on battery life. It's really darn good. And again, it charges ridiculous fast with a 33 watt charger included in the box. All right, so how the phone calls been with this one? They print pretty good. I mean, they're acceptable. Reception's pretty strong, but kind of this phone not pulling in 5G for this one. So LTE on board, and you'll have to check the bands before you decide to pick up this phone to see if it'll work on your carrier. But this one, pretty decent overall internet performance. It's just not getting 5G. And like I say, phone calls, not super impressive, but they get the job done. And I have a pretty decent network connection as well. Now, what are the cons of this phone? It looks like I'm just praising this phone all the way through. And no, I'm not going to praise it everything, everything all the way through. The back of this phone, while it looks nice, it's a fingerprint magnet. It's kind of slimy feeling, a little bit greasy. So definitely going to want to put it in the case. And that's a perfect segue into putting this thing in the case. So let's take a look at how this thing looks in the case here. And you'll see Xiaomi did give you a more frosted look. So just basically takes care of the problem I just mentioned there with the slimy look of your fingerprints. Put this case on it and you have a frosted clear case and that looks really good right there. In addition, I forgot to mention, this thing does come with a pre-installed screen protector. So you don't even gotta install a screen protector at least to get you started. Now this is nothing special. It's a little cheap one, but at least it's perfectly installed on this phone. So you don't have to go ahead and buy one right away if you don't want to. Another thing that's not so great about this phone is that sometimes like when you hold down and press down, sometimes the software just, it's just a little bit delayed sometimes. It's not slow, it doesn't really lag. It's still fast and speedy and smooth, but there's just some things that need to be better optimized for this phone. So it's not perfect in every area. I don't think I'm just praising this thing all the way around. And I do think the front facing camera could use some work. It, Definitely looks too beautified in my opinion, but some people might like that. And lastly, I think this camera bump could be, you know, reduced a bit. I know you kind of got to have one for, you know, having those 108 megapixel cameras, but you know, if Xiaomi can find a way to slim that thing down, that would be nice as well. Give it a cleaner look overall. So I'm pretty impressed with this phone overall. It feels way more than its asking price. The only thing that reminds you that this is still a mid-ranger, again, is the plastic feel of the back. If Xiaomi could find a way to blend this with like a glass kind of material to make it feel a little more premium on the next, the 11 Pro that comes out next year, that would definitely might be a good decision. But I think this is gonna be a really good value option, especially considering a 108 megapixel camera. And it's not just talk, it actually does perform very well as well on this phone as you've seen in the samples. You're getting a lot of phone here for the money. That's the best way I can put it here. And uh, there are some setbacks, like no 5G here. It doesn't have you know, the overall best build, but how can you go wrong with all the other stuff this thing comes with? Now the software updates don't come in all the time super fast. So if you're a person who wants to be always up to date, this might not be for you, but it's just a decent phone value for people who just want a lot of spec and don't wanna pay a lot of money for that. So let me know your thoughts on the Redmi Note 10 Pro. Do you like it? Are you gonna pick one up? Are you like, that's pretty awesome. I'm gonna get it. Or maybe I'm not gonna get it. Let us know down below in the comments. If you found this video, this review helpful, entertaining, informing, click the thumbs up. And if you enjoy these Xiaomi Redmi videos, let me know, I'll consider making more of them in the future. Thank you very much for watching. Nick here, be sure to be well and peace.